and I think about 11 o'clock, lots of rain. <laughs> but let's see, we might get lucky. You never know. Thanks for that. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to Scotland. We're having a, the, the usual Scottish weather. This is a beautiful day for Scotland. Today we're going to be taking the new revised Tiger 1200s out for a spin. So we've got all four versions of the bike here. The Rally Pro, the uh, Rally Explorer, the GT Pro and the GT Explorer. For 2024, Triumph have made some revisions to the engines on these bikes. So it's got a bigger crank, more inertia in the engine, and there's some other changes here. Self-lowering rear suspension, all stuff like that. So I'll run through all of those details, but uh, I suggest you wrap up warm, get yourself a cup of coffee and chop see well the intro. Welcome to an almost sunny Scotland and welcome to the launch of the new Tiger 1200. For 2024 the bikes had a fair few revisions and there's actually a world launch so I'm in Scotland. Uh, we've got a yellow forecast for rain this afternoon so we've got I think 140 mile ride through the Scottish lowlands uh, today. So a decent amount of time to test the bikes. We've got all four, vo all four versions of the bikes here. We're gonna swap between the bikes. We're gonna see what these changes which Triumph have made to the bike for 2024 feel like on the road. It's now got a heavier crank, bigger flywheel. They've basically done revisions to make the engine smoother. So it's all about increasing the inertia slightly of the engine and making it a little bit smoother. So we're gonna give the bike a good old test today, see what it's like. Good test of the weather protection, I think. I'm in all my gear, all my waterproof, so uh, this could be a little bit moist. A hundred and fifty-five miles of Scottish lowlands up to the Cairngorms, the Trussock Mountains, and then we've got a ferry ride back. Several locks, some incredible views, and I think about 11 o'clock, lots of rain <laughs> but let's see we might get lucky you never know so the tiger 1200 this bike came out in 21 and triumph has said they've sold 14,000 of these since it came out this model incredible i mean that's a lot of bikes in my opinion 14,000 sold but the big news really is the engine so of course this has got the 1160 cc triple um, cross plane, you know, with that unique firing order that bring, basically brings a bit more character to the engine, gives it a bit more drive, you know, it, and most importantly for off roading, it, those sort of pulses of the firing order help you get traction. The old Tiger 1200 and 900, the, you know, the pre cross plane, was so smooth it struggled to get traction off road. So because the engine was so light, you know, and, and it wasn't much weight to the crank and the spinning rotational mass wasn't a great deal. And it's sort of a relatively heavy bike, sort of 250 kilos. People found when they were off-roading, it would go really slow on the clutch, sort of doing very slow maneuvers, that they'd stall the bike because there wasn't enough inertia spinning from the engine. So there's a lot of real clutch feathering and they'd tend to stall it. So that's the idea of these, of this heavier weight crank. So it's about 900 grams all in all, almost a kilo. So that's based on the extra webbing on the crank to make it heavier, so as it's spinning, there's more rotational mass. There's also a beefed up flywheel. And then of course, all of the other changes to mapping and slight revisions to pistons to accommodate that, that larger crank. It's not about power. You know, the new Tiger 900, of course, they increase the power. This isn't about power. This is about refinement and feel. And I have to say, I mean, it's been six months since I've tried the Tiger 1200, but from memory, it does seem smoother. It does seem smoother than the bike I rode six months ago. It's a shame they haven't got an old one here to back to back, but unfortunately they don't. There's also been a lot of other little tweaks, you know, that the clutch lever is slightly longer, give a little bit more reach. So say you've got the rubber cushioning on the, on the handlebars, the seat has also been made more comfortable, so there's more padding in the seat. The foot on the GT 
models, the road-based models, which this isn't, but they've also increased the ground clearance. I think they've moved the pegs in and up a tiny bit. Other big news is, of course, this ride height system, which is similar to the, uh, the BMW system, whereby if you hold the home button down, the bike can lower up to 20 millimetres. Now, it depends how heavy you are, because, of course, if the bike is fully loaded, when the preload's up anyway, the bike's not going to sit as high because of all the weight on it. So if it's just a single rider, a lightweight rider, you can have a potentially maximum of 20 millimetres reduction in height by hitting the home button and taking the preload out of the rear. Because it's only rear ride height, but it's not fully automatic. I don't know why they've not made it automatic like the BMW. You've got to manually turn it on every time you stop. So you've got to think, I'm going to lower the bike now and hold the button down. What I've found with uh, this rally version in the past is it, it has really impressed how capable this bike is. I mean, it's got the Metzler Cruise on it. It's obviously got the 21 inch front on the rally version and the GT's got the 90. So this is the off-road focused bike. This also has 220 millimeters of suspension travel front and rear. But what really impresses me with this is just how capable it is when you're throwing it along some twisty roads. And it'd be interesting to see if, if the GT does feel a bit more capable on the streets, back to back in it, when you go into the 19 inch front and the more road set up suspension. I guess so. <laughs> this thing is a beast. I've forgotten how much of a beast this was. When the engine's buzzing around 6,000 revs, I can feel a little bit of vibration in the foot pegs. So there is still some vibration with this cross plane engine. I can feel a little bit in the pegs with this dampening of the bars. I can feel a little bit in the bars, but I don't think it would ever become, I don't think the fires would ever become intrusive or annoying. <laughs> but I mean, it's just absolutely gliding over this tarmac. This terrible pot old tarmac is absolutely gliding over it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a roller coaster ride. Yeah, the Rally Pro, I have to say, is impressive on the road. Absolutely impressive on the road. And this is what I remember from when I borrowed it before. You could, you'd be incredibly surprised what you can keep up with on one of these. I was here uh, at before, I was here yesterday. I've actually been up for a week. I've been up since Saturday, Scotland. Mrs. Chops has also come on this launch with me. We drove up seven hours from Portsmouth. We were staying up in the Trussex Mountains, Port of Mendeath, I think it was called. It was like a, just by a, a lake. Really pretty. So we've done, we did this route the other day. There's the seven, there's the three lock tour or something up here. It's like a little gravelly off-road bit where you go around for seven miles around all these locks. I don't think we're doing it today because we're doing 100% tarmac today. But that was really good, but we're going past that. But yeah, I've been up here. There's a little Tesco's up here. I bought my groceries yesterday. Bought myself a picnic. I'm in the chocolate bar, not a full-on picnic. Oh, quick, lowered suspension. Are we on low? Yeah, we're already on low. Get the foot down. Hasn't gone up. So if you're in town, you put it down, it'll stay down until you hit 52 miles an hour. So that's the idea. So if you're just in town, not going over 50, then it will just stay in the low mode, which I guess is fine, isn't it? We're going to go right here. I knew we would. There's a, there's a co-op there. Look, I told you, didn't I? I told you there's a co-op there. That's one and a half thousand revs. That's how tractable this engine is. And I guess that refinement made it a little bit smoother, less chuggy. It's got a really nice bottom end got a really nice mid-range and then a good top end as well. I mean 150 horsepower is a lot of power isn't it? It's, it's one of the most, the more, you know, the more powerful event bikes out there. It's still more powerful than the new GS and it's shaft drive so it's the most powerful shaft drive event bike you can buy. What a beast! 
This is going to be a fun day. If that rain stays away, it's going to be unbelievable today. This is Loch Katrine in the rain. It's beautiful. The rain has come in. There you go, the Loch Katrine, just for you, so you can see it. Bikes are down there at the car park. Gorgeous, gorgeous Scottish weather. Apparently, it was uh, a, a gentleman called Thomas Cook. There's some ferries and stuff from here, or boat trips, but there's a guy called Thomas Cook who started the first trips. And that, of course, is Thomas Cook, the travel agent. That turned into Thomas Cook, the travel agent. So he started here, Mr. Thomas Cook. So uh, don't just book it, Thomas Cook it. But now I'm riding the Rally Explorer. So the Rally with the 220mm suspension and the 30 litre fuel tank. This is a big motorcycle. First of all, let's not forget, heated seat. Heated seat on number two, heated grips. On number three, the heated grips are not as hot as the BMW heated grips or the Honda heated grips. The Africa Twin heated grips are hotter. They're, I can feel them coming through onto my gloves, but they're not hot, hot. They're only hot. You can gas in me, man. <laughs> so I've just ridden the Rally Pro. This is the Rally Explorer. So it's basically the same bike, same suspension setup. But as I mentioned, with those extras, the bigger, the 30 litre tank, it's a big bike this, this is a 260 kilo motorcycle. This is a big machine, but it's like anything, you know, once it's rolling, you don't notice it. And with that, you know, preload reduction system, it's got it knocks 20 mil off it. That might make it a little bit more manageable. But this is what I've borrowed in the past and been super impressed with how capable it is. You know, comfortable and capable. There's not many bikes are comfortable and capable. There's really not many bikes. It's quite a rare thing. So in theory, with that 20 mil, you can knock off the height with that, with that preload system. Plus, you can get a 20 mil lowered seat as well for, this, for these bikes. You could potentially now knock 40 millimeters off the ride height, the seat height. So if these bikes are always a little bit too tall for you, because this is a big tall bike, especially the, the rally versions, you can theoretically knock 40 mil off of that. The niggles with this machine, which which do annoy me a little bit, is the whole speed of the interface. I mean, a seven inch TFT looks great. I love sort of like the animations. I like that layout. What I don't like so much is when you go into it, it's just all a little bit slow and a little bit laggy. Like you select your mode and you've got to wait for it to go back to the riding display mode. And it takes a little bit of time. It's just a little bit that lag, and when you first turn the bike on, it takes quite a while for the screen to actually wake up. Yes, you can start the bike, yes, you can ride without the screen, but it's just all a little bit laggy, that display, and I, I don't like that. Other things which I'm not so keen on with this bike is the rear passenger seat. It's like two inches higher than the rider's seat. So when you're swing it, swinging your leg on and off, even though I'm six foot two, you know, it's one of those bikes you have to stand on the pegs to get on and off because you can't swing your leg over because the passenger seat is really high and you, and you just keep catching it with your boot. Anyway, enough moaning. <laughs> so join the ride. <laughs> to your right, we have another lock. No idea what lock that is. It doesn't look very impressive in the pissing rain though, does it? Real world test. This is a real world test, ladies and gents. That looks like a slippery road surface if ever I did see one. A bit of wheel spin, bit of wheelie at the same time. She's a bit of a hooligan's bike, this one. It's a wetty, mate, isn't it? I think there must be an abattoir in this village. Why's that? I don't know what it's called. What's it called? Kill my hog. Kill my hog. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah! Oh, oh, oh. Iron brew and fish and chips. Bit of taxi down before you. I thought this place is called. <laughs> There's a bear in a kilt. There can't be too many places with a a bear in a kilt. What's it called? This place? What's it called? The Drovers Inn. The Drovers Inn. The Drovers Inn. The Drovers Inn. One of the oldest inns in Scotland. There we go. Right, 
right, so now I'm going to be riding one of the GT Pro models. I spent the whole morning on the rallies. Now we're going to go, look at the size difference there. Tiger 900 compared to 1200 Rally Explorer. The size difference between those bikes. So we're on the GT Pro now. So the GT Pro has a 19 inch front wheel, cast wheels. This is the not the Explorer, so it doesn't have the 30 litre tank. It's got a 20 litre tank. So it's the same bike, but the suspension's a bit lower. It's only got 200 millimetres of travel rather than 220. It's still got all the, you know, adjustable preload on the rear. All the features are the same, but just a little bit lower, a little bit smaller. As I say, wider front tyre because these, you know, with the 19, the tyre width is very different. So if we look at the, the tyre width, is that a 120? Yeah, 120. And look at the size of the tyre on the Rally Pro. But you can see, you can physically see how much thinner the front tyre is on the Rally Pro. So it'll be interesting to tell the difference on this machine. So let us mount her. Heated seat, yes please. Heated grips, level three. You got the new, oh, he's got the dry gloves on, the booger. Everyone dressed in Triumph spin liners to keep dry. Oh, it's like he shut himself. He's gone straight through him, that fish and chips. At least he's gassing me again, as usual. Oh, he's always gassing me. Straight away, even just throwing your leg over the, uh, the GT models, it feels a lot lower. Nowhere near as high. And it, we had a bit of a discussion about this over lunch and when we were doing the the photos and back and forth we actually swapped all the bikes at that point and when you jump on the gt this this doesn't feel quite as bad this one but the actual agility feels slightly slower steering on the gt than the rally which is is a bit odd but actually this this doesn't feel so bad now because it was the gt explorer I was riding, which of course has got 30 litres of fuel in it this morning when it was... This has obviously got a lot less fuel and it doesn't feel so bad, but... You know, what we noticed earlier was the f it didn't, you know, it didn't turn as quickly, even though this has got a 19 inch front. So in theory, this should be quicker turning than the bike with the 21. But I think because the, 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 the weight is a bit higher on the rally, and that because the front tyre is skinnier, but it actually feels like it turns in a bit quicker than the GT. It's one of those things you wouldn't normally notice apart from when you're back to backing them. But it's, I think the rally models just are a little bit quicker turning, which is really quite odd considering they've got a 21 inch front wheel and these have got a, and these have got a 19. Whoa, easy tiger. <laughs> So yeah, so now we're heading towards, I think, there's a ferry, and then we're going to be getting the ferry across the Clyde. I think it's the Clyde is the river, and then we get a ferry across the Clyde and then back to the hotel. But I think we've got another 60 or so miles to do yet. But let's see how we go. We've got another lock on the left. No idea what lock that is, or even if you could even see it. But yeah, there you go. Look, there's a nice foggy lock. Can't see nothing. There we go, beautiful views of fog and rain. Soaking those views. The new, you know, low, auto lowering suspension is brilliant, but why it's not, you can't set it to an automatic mode when that makes perfect sense, doesn't it? So that's another bit of a criticism. Why is there no auto on, on the ride height lowering? But from a, a rider's point of view, they really take some beating. They've got performance, they've got comfort, shaft drives, so they've got ease of use, you know, ease of maintenance, really good weather protection. A lot of, you know, heated grips are standard, cruise control is standard, so they're, they're well specced. There goes another lock, or just a big grey thing. <laughs> Probably looks amazing when it's not raining. So I've been in Scotland for five days, I've had it's been absolutely awful, absolutely awful with every meal. <laughs> I've had haggis with every meal, black pudding. Oh, it's been some 
fantastic food. I think every day I've had haggis. So yeah, I've basically eaten my way around Scotland. I definitely need to do a haggis hunt with Bruce. We need to find the best haggis in Scotland because I've got a taste for it now. I, I've got something to compare it against. I know what makes a good haggis and what makes a bad haggis. I think a lot of that is due to texture and yeah, the texture of the haggis. Obviously I think whether it's a, a five-legged or a four-legged makes a big difference. I think the females have five legs and I think the males have four legs. It's something like that. How you sort of, I don't know, that's how you sex them. But yeah, I have really got a taste for the old haggis. Lovely little things when you see them. I haven't actually, we haven't seen any today. They don't like the rain normally. But they're lovely, pretty little things. But uh, yeah, they're very tasty. Absolutely awful. If you could see, it would be pretty spectacular this. It's a coup. It's a coup. Oh, so stand up. We're on an adventure bike. Got to stand up, haven't we? We're having an adventure here. Absolutely waterfall. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Oh, cold now stood out. That all the heat out my bottom. That all the heat out my heated seat. Well, we're uh, on the ferry, and we've been told uh, it's not the calmest out there. It's a few white horses. Let's go to the front. Got to stay with the bikes. You know, everyone else has run off indoors. But uh, yeah, this is it. So we're powering up. We're going over there. That wasn't wet enough as it was. Yes. Yeah, get quite crazy on it. Oh, what a day. What a day of riding. I mean, it's stopped now. It's stopped raining now, typically. Now we're about 15 minutes away. But yeah, it's been, uh, been an interesting day. Really good to try these new bikes. You know, it's in it's impressive the tiger i'm not going to go through everything i said again but it's an impressive machine comfort performance all of that changes for this year they're all welcome changes it's definitely a bit more bit smoother than the old bike not that the old bike was really that bad anyway but it's just refinement isn't it just refine it refine it refine it i think obviously bmw came out with the new gs and I think Triumph probably thought they had to respond, you know, with these with these updates. And they have. And it's stonking. I'm wet and soggy. I need a bath to warm me up at the hotel. And then some whiskey. Take me home. Tiger 1200.